Hi friends, welcome back to Foundational Truths. My name is Naya and I'm so glad you joined me today. There is a real cost in believing when it looks like it's not going to happen. When everything around you says, this is not happening, it's never happened, it's never happened in your family, and it's never going to happen, why do you still believe? Hallelujah. The Lord wants to remind you today, friends, that you have to continue to believe. You must fix your eyes on Jesus. So your job right now is to fix your eyes on Jesus and to keep moving ahead. It's Though it's normal to feel discouragement, it is not normal in the kingdom of God to remain discouraged. To remain discouraged is to say that God's not going to do it. So you cannot remain in that place of discouragement or bitterness because God is going to do it. And so you have to fix your eyes on Jesus. And this is exactly what Hannah did. So Hannah was the mother of Samuel and Samuel was an incredible priest and prophet. So Hannah had trouble conceiving. She was tormented by her husband's other wife, Penina. Day in and day out, Penina tormented Hannah because Hannah could not have children. And so her husband tried to comfort her. Her husband, Elkanah, loved Hannah very deeply. And he tried to comfort her to no avail. At one point he said, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you so downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than 10 sons? But Hannah could not be comforted. There is a reason, hallelujah, that you can't be comforted. There is a reason that you cannot be comforted until you see this promise fulfilled. Hallelujah. And it's, it, it, it's more than what you think it is. There is a reason that you will not be comforted until you see this promise fulfilled. See, it's, it has everything to do with Yahweh. It has everything to do with him and him proving to you that he can fill your every need according to his riches in glory. See, Hannah had a desire to have children. That desire did not come from the abyss. That desire came from God Almighty and her womb was shut up, but God was about to show up in Hannah's life and he was about to show her that I am your provider, that I am the need filler and God was about to fill her needs and he was about to do it in such a powerful and potent way so friend the lord gave you that desire inside of your heart whatever it is that desire that you don't even want to 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 um to, to think about because it's too painful to think about because you didn't think it would be filled. But that desire you have is from the Lord. The scripture says he will give you the desires of your heart. In other words, he's going to, to stir in your heart what he wants you to desire. Because if he does that, that causes you then to start to start believing him for it. And then he could perform this miracle in your life by feeling that desire because only only he can do it. He's about to show you another side of him. You're about to know God in a different way. He's about to show you that he is the need filler for things that you didn't think that you would ever get. He's about to do that for you. And so he gave you the desire you have so you can continue trusting him, so that you can continue believing him, so that you can experience him, hallelujah, as your provider, and so that you will be satisfied by him and him alone. Hannah's husband could not satisfy her need for a child, hallelujah, though he loved her, he loved her so deeply, but husbands and wives are human beings. They, they can only fill our needs uh, to the extent that they can. They are limited. Hallelujah. They are limited. For those of you who think that a husband and a wife can fulfill your every needs, it is crazy to think that. It's impossible because no matter how much Elkanah loved Hannah, he could never give her children. He could never give her children. It's not like he couldn't perform, but he could not open up her womb. Hallelujah. But God was about to do something in Hannah's life 
that only he could perform. Only he could perform. And so Hannah continued to believe even when she was hurting and didn't even want to believe anymore because of the pain of believing. But she continued to believe there is pain. There is pain in believing. That's why the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. It hurts to believe when it is taking a very long time for the thing to happen. It hurts. But today, friend, don't get mad with God. Don't, don't be mad with God because this too, this pain, this discouragement, this is a part of the journey. Nothing that you go through as a child of God is in vain. This pain, this discomfort, it is not in vain. This too is going to help you. It is fortifying you. Listen, this is twofold. This promise being fulfilled is twofold. This is this is not about the promise. This is this is oh wow. This is not just about a promise being fulfilled. This is about you and God. And this is about you uh stepping not only into this promise but into the call of God on your life. This is why it's so weighty. It, it, it's there's a weight to this because this is not just about you getting a career or you getting a spouse or you getting this is this is life changing. This is weighty stuff. This is weighty. Hallelujah. This is weighty, but you have to keep on going. The fact is you have passed the test. Why would you pass the test and not not think that you graduated? You graduated. You passed the test, but you have to keep on going. But what you're feeling is only to build your faith, though your soul may be in deep anguish like Hannah's was. The Lord is about to change the scenario for you like he did for Hannah. The scripture said that once they had finished eating in Shiloh, that Hannah stood up. Hannah stood up. That means she kept going. There was movement. She didn't sit in her grief. She didn't say, I'm not going to worship the Lord. I'm not going to the house of the Lord. She kept going and she kept enduring Penina's taunts. She kept enduring and she kept going. I love that the Bible says that in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The scripture says weeping may endure for a night. Your weeping has endured for a very long time. But the reason it says that is because this, 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 this pain that you're feeling, the anguish that you're feeling in your soul, it's going to be like a small thing, a small time in space compared to all of the beauty that you're going to receive after. And so in her weeping, in her anguish and weeping bitterly, she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery, that's how so many of you are feeling, and remember me. And not forget your servant. Listen, God has not forgotten you. He didn't forget Hannah and he didn't forget you. If you will remember me and not forget your servant, but give me a son, then this was Hannah's promise to the Lord. I will give him to you, O Lord, all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. So Hannah was essentially saying to the Lord, Lord, when you give me the promise, I will give it back to you. Hallelujah. I will honor you with the promise that you have filled in my life. I will honor you. So friend, when the Lord gives you your promise, it is for you to honor the Lord with what he has fulfilled in your life and not to make this thing an idol. It is not for you to forget about God. It is not for you to be distracted by it, but it is for you to help build God's kingdom. God can use anyone and anything to build his kingdom. This promise that you will re receive, it is going to honor and glorify the ancient of days, Yahweh. It is going to honor and glorify our God. Hallelujah. So due to the magnitude of this promise, it is going to alter your life. It is not only going to alter your life and your family's life, but your lineage. It's going to alter your lineage forever. Holy is your name, God. It's going to alter your lineage forever. This which the Lord is about to do, about to perform, 
form in your life. It is going to alter your family's lineage forever. This is why it's so weighty. This is why it's taking some time. This is why it's taking some time because alterations, hallelujah, are, are getting ready to be made in your lineage. Hallelujah. This is life changing, friends. This is life changing. This is why you cannot give into discouragement. You cannot give into discouragement. You can feel it. Yes, you are human, but don't stay there. Keep on believing. Keep on believing. You are not crazy. Listen, about 14 years ago when I started my what I call my spiritual revival, and I started believing God for things, I felt like I was crazy because no one around me believed the way. And listen, it's it's not like I am some super holy person. I'm not. I am so imperfect. Trust me, I am. But I felt like I was crazy. There's so many nights I went crying to God and saying, why am I the only one who feels that way? Why can't I be like everyone else? I don't want to I don't want to believe and be on the outside. I I want to stop believing because I'm making a fool of myself cuz nothing is happening and I want to quit. I don't want to be like like this. I feel like an outsider. I feel like an outsider among my own people. Why can't I just be satisfied like everybody else is satisfied? Why do I have to keep believing for bigger? And I felt crazy. But every time I did that going to bed, as I woke up, the Lord filled me with more belief and I could not stop believing. It was like I was a prisoner to believing for bigger, to believing for bigger. And God is saying to you today, if you're believing for more, if you're believing for more and you're the only one around you believing for more, you are not crazy. You are not crazy. You are just the person he was looking for. He's saying, you are just who I was looking for. For generations in your family, I've been seeking for someone to believe the way that you believe me. I've been looking for someone to believe. And because you have believed me beyond what you can see, beyond what you have experienced, I am going to bless your socks off. I am going to give you things that you didn't even ask for. I'm going to give you things that was not even on your radar. I am going to bless you and your family is going to feel the impact of it. Your mother, your grandmother, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, your kids, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. It doesn't matter how old you are. God wants to do something in your life. He's about to do something. Hallelujah. He's about to move in your life like never before. Let him flow and do not stop his flow because you get stuck in discouragement. Do not get stuck in discouragement, friends. The Lord is about to do something extraordinary in your life. And heaven is saying right now to rejoice for it is done. Rejoice for it is done. You have paid a hefty price to be here. To, to be on the outskirts and to be uh, to feel marginalized and to feel so different from everyone around you. Hallelujah. It's about to pay off. You are God's guy. You are God's gal. You are God's child. He has got you in the palm of his hands. You have paid a hefty weight to be here. Hallelujah. To be here, to walk on the straight and narrow path. But listen, we have already won the ultimate prize because the ultimate prize is to know him. That's what Paul said, to know him, to know him in this, in this level of intimacy that you can actually hear his voice, that you can actually engage with him, that you could be washing the dishes but can be having a conversation with the God of the universe. Are you kidding me? That is the ultimate price. The God of the universe, the God who created the solar systems, the God who created all these wonderful things, science and water and all these different systems, the God who created the human body in its complexities. Come on, the God of the universe, he's so big, but yet he makes himself so personal to be talking to me while I'm, I'm folding laundry. While I'm on, uh, while I'm walking on the street, are you kidding me? 
That is the ultimate price. So the, 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 the fulfillment of the promise on your life is just, it's just extras. It really is just extras. Hallelujah. And so friends, friends, listen, the cost is weighty. Hallelujah. But the Lord says this, after you've suffered a little while, the God of all peace who has called you, you are called, you are called to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself, He's not going to send Michael. He's not going to send Gabriel. He's going to do it himself. Will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Lord, Friends, the Lord is establishing you. He has a personal stamp on your life. Paul writes this. That was Peter speaking, but Paul writes this. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. God is about to reveal glory in you and through you because you have endured and because you have passed the test. You have endured the fiery trials. You have come out as pure gold. You are about to bring God so much glory simply because you endured. So you cannot give up. Do not give in to discouragement. Do not give in to bitterness. Do not give in to frustration. Hallelujah. When Hannah prayed, she was misunderstood understood by the current priest Eli of that time. You may have been misjudged or misunderstood by religious people. Hallelujah. But God has got his hand on you. He has marked you. He has put his marked, uh, mark on you as a remnant one. You are marked by your obedience and you are marked by your surrender. He has his stamp of approval on you. The Lord has his stamp of approval on you. The Lord is so very proud of you. Hallelujah. The Lord is so very proud of you for enduring. Hallelujah. For enduring. And so Eli, like many of the religious people, will misunderstand you. But listen, Hannah wasn't upset when she replied to him. This is what she said. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. She wasn't even scared to tell him how she was feeling. She said, I've not been drinking wine or beer. I was just pouring out my soul to the Lord. Hallelujah. When you pour out your soul to the Lord, Hannah understood that when she pours out her soul to the Lord, that he responds. Hallelujah. And this is what the priest said. He said, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Hallelujah. And then Hannah went her way and she ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Friend, your face no longer has to be downcast because something happened when Hannah poured out her soul to God. Something happened when she came out of being discouraged by being tortured by Penina. Hallelujah. Something happened when she poured herself out to him. He filled her. He filled Hannah with strength. He filled her with hope. He filled her with the knowing that her prayer was finally going to be answered. So friend, the Lord is about to answer your prayers. Hallelujah. He is about to fill your needs like only he can do. He is about to fill that desire that he himself has placed in your heart. Hallelujah. And so Hannah went home and, and, and she knew that this time when her husband was, was going to make love to her, she knew that this time she would be pregnant. And surely enough, nine months later, Samuel was born and, and, and Hannah kept her promise and she honored God by giving Samuel back to the Lord. And we saw the great things we read about the, and we read about the great things that Samuel goes on to do. And listen, when you honor the Lord with your promise, the Lord is going to give you more than you could ever imagine or think. Uh, Hannah asked God for one child and God gave her six in total. She asked for one male child and she got three additional boys and two more daughters. She had six children in total. Listen, the Lord is about to exceed your expectations. He's going to give you more than you could ever imagine or think. Hallelujah. But you have to keep going. Don't get stuck in discouragement, friend. Don't get stuck in discouragement. Pour out your soul to God, hallelujah, and rejoice. Rejoice. Get up like Hannah. Get up and eat something, hallelujah, for it is done. You have passed the test. 
it is done hallelujah know that it is done act like it is it is done it is done and listen this is your time this is your time i believe this is birthing season this is birthing season this is the third month of the hebraic on the hebraic calendar friend and three means completion and on the spiritual calendar the hebraic calendar as well this is a ninth month this is a month of giving birth you are going to birth many things around this time it is birthing season it is time for gift giving it is time for beauty for ashes the time is now so rejoice friends for it is done god bless you and thank you for hanging out with me but i am glad that the lord came through on this video so god bless you and i hope this has encouraged your soul and i will talk to you soon take care and bye bye